we have to do. So this is going to be our overall agenda. So let's discuss about who is an underground. <coughs> Any volunteers? You can feel free to raise your hand and uh, you can feel free to answer. There is no judgment. Who is an underground? Second row, third person, can you guess? Just very guess. Whatever you know, you can. So there is nothing like right or wrong, it's all level. Idea to start? Yeah, absolutely. You're right. You can take a seat. So I think almost everyone has the basic understanding, right? So entrepreneur is a person who sets up a business by taking financial risk on the hope of a profit. Right, so he takes he takes takes risk financially. He is taking a risk, but he is hoping for a profit. So that's what entrepreneur is doing. So he is a person, you know, who uh, has ideas for a product or a service. So what he wants to do is he wants to convert those ideas into business. That is his whole whole aim. There are certain people who you know who want to start very small businesses, like they want to start a boutique shop, they want to start a. a small restaurant, they want to start a small watch shop, everything is a small business. But at the same time, there are few other people who have a higher aim. They want to create an app which millions of people can use. They want to impact a huge number of people, right? So we have to respect both the business. It's like some people who want to continue the same business, some people want to expand, so both are there. But if you see both, the successful entrepreneurs have some very common characteristics, right? So uh, they are always motivated. This. So you have to be self-motivated. So there will not be anybody who will come and motivate you when you are an entrepreneur. So the, maybe you will not get support from your same family members also. Your family members may not. Uh, they they may, sometimes they will say, "Don't do this. It's a risk. Don't do. Don't start all those things." But you have to stay strong. You have to be motivated. You have to be self-motivated. Only then you can become a strong entrepreneur. Right? So, they are always creative and innovative. They are always thinking of something like, they don't accept things as we speak. Like if, you, if I go and say something to you, they will not accept. They will say why it is, what it is, how it can be changed, how we can improve. They always want to bring something new to the table. So that's how his thought process will be. So you guys also have to start thinking in that way if you want to go towards entrepreneurship. Right? So your thinking has to, thinking you plays a vital role. You have to take a lot of decisions when you are in a big companies. So there are certain places where uh, you have to take a very critical uh, decision which can backfire you as well. Right? So leadership is not something very easy. It's a very, very crucial skill. So that is actually needed for entrepreneur. Right? And uh, so he has, you have to be passionate about it. So if you are going under compulsion, so just like, okay, entrepreneur is fancy, I want to do it. If you go in that way, uh, again, that will not work. So if you want to start a business, you should have some interest in it. So you have to sit and analyze whether you are able to uh, improve something, whether you will be able to achieve it, is there any real fact, uh, whether we are over dreaming. So whatever is fine, but it should be somewhat realistic also. You have to sit and think about it, think through it. You can even have your friends also. So there are a lot of people who are doing business with uh, best friends also. They are also successful as well. Right? So that is one thing. And also there is a statistics, uh, you know, uh, which is taken across almost 50 million companies in uh, UK. Right? So out of the statistics, what it says is, uh, almost 75% of the businesses are started with only a single person. Right? Only one person. He doesn't involve anyone else. If, if I want to start a business, I run myself. I do everything myself. I am not taking anyone else. So there could be a lot of reason for that. So some reason is that if I started my own business, I am not troubling anyone. If it goes lost, I am not ruining his time and not ruining his effort. But it's over to you. Like if your friend is really good enough, supportive, and you can go ahead with that also. But statistics says most of the people have started alone in UK. At the same time, 
uh, there is one more Bloomberg statistics what it says is almost, they are tracking a statistics for one and a half years so people who have started their business out of 10, 8 people have failed in the first one and a half years right so this is an important thing because I don't want to tell you guys entrepreneurship is good, fancy, all of that's okay but there is dark side also so there is a huge risk also. out of 10 people, 8 people but those 2 people who got succeeded they are earning in crores and crores and crores but if you get failed that's also a learning you will have a lot, very strong learning that may help you when you go to a job also for a higher leadership position because leadership position is not only about technical skills you should also know a lot of things about uh, this entrepreneurial thing, leadership skills and a lot of additional skills are also actually needed so I am pretty sure this will help you guys if you start doing some business ok next thing is challenges of being an entrepreneur um, so I think we covered almost but the main challenge is that you have to be lonely so you will be always kind of worrying about uh, how much revenue you can make on a daily basis how you can uh, grow what your money will happen and how you can grow your business and a lot of times you will not get very strong support you will get help but not support entering support you will never get you have to manage it yourself right so that's all about lonesome it's pretty lonesome journey right next question is do you like copying in an exam have you guys copied in your exam at any point of your life yes, yes, faculty are not allowed to turn <laughs> so you guys can feel free just raise your hands ok I, I see a lot of people are nodding their heads so I of course many people would have done at least once in a lifetime very small copying on this so what I am trying to say is people who have done copy you have a quality of being an entrepreneur seriously so why how that's the next question right so people who has copied so let me give you an example if you have copied from the previous person you are writing exactly the same and when I am correcting your paper I will understand ok so you have exactly copied and I will find you out you will be screwed but while copying if you are changing few words here and there and you are writing and you are presenting the paper I will not be able to find uh, ok you have copied so I will be thinking that you are on your, written on your own so similar kind of strategy is applied in world's number one businesses also right so lot of businesses in the world they have actually copied ideas from other businesses and they have implemented in such a way that their company grows let me give you some examples so that you guys can understand much better mm, so which is the world's famous uh, social networking company is Current company is Instagram? Meta, Meta, Facebook. Yes, you guys are right. So, if you see this Facebook, right, when it started, it was a pretty bad idea to start Facebook. Because there was another company called MySpace who was actually doing that business. Right? So, they were, they were the biggest uh, social networking company at that point of time. Nobody was close to them. Yeah, Arkut, yeah, that's right one. Arkut is another competitor. Today, Arkut is lower. When we were young, we were all using Arkut and now it is lower. Facebook has improved. So, what happens here is, uh, so it was just started by Harvard students. It's like college students like you guys only. So, they started it just like a game. Slowly, they started improving it on daily basis. As time passed by, they did a tremendous job. So they were very focusing on how we can bring new features that can actually impact millions of people and they succeeded towards it. So they started working on it and altogether they got a very good result. So just see from where they started, how they started. They didn't have their own idea. They took the idea of another company, they implemented that idea and now they implemented it much better way than the other company and they are everywhere right now. Now it's in everybody's reach, everybody's using Facebook. So that is an example of how you copy idea from others and change it and use it. So it's people may say for starting an entrepreneurship, if you want to start a new business, you should have some idea. That is there. That is for there for uh, some some cases, but there are for some other cases where you don't actually need that also. So there is one more example I can give you. This is not a that famous example. This is like there is a company called Lyft L Y F T. It was actually started in uh, U S and uh, it has presence in Canada also today so when this company started Uber was already there it was very famous so Uber was ruling everywhere in US but these guys Lyft has improved uh, 
uh, they took that idea implemented in much better way they changed a lot of things on the process they uh, at one point of time what happened is in certain cities more than uber lift was using lift was preferred so same thing happens here between ola uber also in india and if you see south east asian countries like right, indonesia and singapore you will see grab everywhere. grab is very famous over there so they are a single player also there no there is no comrade who is gojek also so gojek and grab are very uh, famous over there. so what i am trying to say is again the same thing so you don't need to have your own idea you can copy the idea so you can right now also you can think about some other ideas which people have already used which is there and you may feel this is not the right thing you can change it a little better and you can start implementing so that this can be improved so you guys can think about that also and last example can you guys guess this example this is the biggest company in the world and this company is your friend your best friend amazon is a best friend why you always like to purchase something on amazon order something who amazon whatsapp <laughs> okay so in whatsapp you have a friend but this company itself is your friend google. yes google so i got a lot of answers yeah so you might guys might have guessed it before also but i think you are slowly answering that's true google right so what if i tell you google was also copied from another company right so Initially, it was a company called Alta Vista. So, Alta Vista was the number one search engine at that point of time. So, what happened is these guys. So, I think uh, credit goes to our uh, current CEO, right, Sundar Pichai. He is also hailing from Tamil Nadu. So, he was the one prominently working on the search engine department. He was heading that whole thing. He brought a lot of improvements, lot of energy. It was a pretty big challenge when there is somebody who is doing top-notch work at that point of time. you are competing with them and you are getting better than them and going to the next level you just look how much confidence they had how much trust they had in their business and how much hard work and commitment that people have done come employees have done it's it's not a single person work obviously if there is a something which is coming up there is a huge team which will be working in the back end but sundar pichai was actually leading it right so they succeeded in it how they succeeded that's because you know they implemented the algorithm in much better way so the actual algorithm which was previously used by the other company it was limited it was it may not be giving you the right search when you search something your uh, actual search will be somewhere on the next page then it will not use you but these guys have corrected the algorithm so whatever you search if you search for the best cafe near me or if you search for uh, best uh, cab uh, dealers near me whatever it is right so you will get those things in the first thing which is actually uh, highly rated and the uh, which is closely related to you they are the most visited website in the world and uh, their search engine is the most searched web uh, search engine in the world also so there is a competitor which is coming up with the help of chat gpt that is bing uh, sorry yeah bing microsoft bing right mm -hmm. so they are going to integrate with chat gpt but i think for the past uh, one week you guys if you have seen news there are a lot of hassles which are happening in chat open ai chat gpt is actually won't be open ai and in open ai ceo uh, actually stepped down and he joined microsoft so there is a lot of uh, here and there things conflicts are currently going on but uh, i think one things those things will be resolved soon and if those things goes well if microsoft is having an upper hand there is a more chance that they can compete with google in future very near future but at this moment google is the best so again what i'm trying to say here is you can copy the other idea but change it next thing is never look for perfection right so what why we should not look for perfection so i guess may ask if i want to get something uh, i i paying some money i should get it properly i should get it perfectly so that is the end user perspective right but at the same time you have to think from a businessman perspective that is uh, entrepreneurs without any support person who is starting if you look from that perspective you should never actually look for perfection in the beginning phase of your business you can start thinking about it after some time but not in the initial phase i'll tell you why there is a company called nikin okay so that's a t-shirt manufacturing company they initially started their business in uh, uh, asia side asian countries and they were very good in the business they started picking up like anything so they what they thought is they okay we have started the business it's going well then what we can do we can expand our business to other continent and they started moving towards europe also so once they started going towards european countries 
their product started uh, getting a lot of bad feedbacks. Can you guess? Guess why? Anyway, guess why it got failed. It was working. T-shirts were very good in Asia, but not in Europe. Climatic conditions. Can't hear you guys. Climatic. Weather. Climatic condition. Ah uh, no. Some other. Something else. Standards. Standards. Yes, standards is something which we can just very close. But uh, that is one more thing. One more basic thing. Usage. Yes, yes, no. Design. Fabric. Design, no. Fabric. It's very basic thing. Right? Fabric. Now price is different. Quality, no. Color, no. Fabric. No. So what do you guys do when you go to a shop and purchase a t-shirt or shirt? What do you guys see the first thing? Size. Price. Size. I got somewhere. Size. size. Yes. You guys answered it. So size was the problem. Because uh, in the Asian countries, the size will be XL. But the same XL will be M in uh, European countries. So this company was a startup and they were not able to focus. They did not even think about it. They start directly implemented the same XL size to uh, Europe also. They, they started getting very bad feedbacks. So they did not step back. What they did is, they started understanding it. They took the feedback. They are very, very much interested in working on the feedback and making things better so that their business grows in other, other continent also. So it saved in work. So they sat, they sat on the feedback, they worked on the feedback, they changed the size according to European standards, European uh, related levels, and uh, their business picked up very well. So that's the reason you should not look for perfection in the beginning of your business. But going forward, in the later point of time, when companies grow, has already grown, then you can start thinking about standardization and you can start thinking about uh, perfection and all those things. The next thing is always seek for help. So I think a lot of people who always hesitate to ask for help, right? So it is there for many people. So, but you have to be shameless when you are an entrepreneur. You have to ask for help to anyone. See, the bad thing or the worst thing that you can get is a no. Ma maximum you will get a no. No, I cannot help you. Also. But you will be amazed when you ask help for others. There are a lot of people, good people who are ready to help you guys. Maybe your known people, your family members, your friends, or strangers, a lot of people. So what happened is, there was a startup. Um, they wanted to start going to the office for the very first time. But they did not want to use, they did not want to purchase a new furniture. They wanted to save some capital cost. So, in order to manage it, what they did is they, uh, that founder was very prominent in LinkedIn. How many of you guys are aware of LinkedIn? Everyone. I can see many people, that's good. So, when we were in school times, we were not, uh, school or college time, we were not that much aware, but I think nowadays you guys are having a lot of good knowledge. Yes. So, LinkedIn is very helpful in many ways. It's very powerful tool. It will be very similar to Facebook, but it is professional. So if you have an account in LinkedIn, you can actually start following a lot of good people and you can even interact with directly with some business people also, people who are uh, founders of the startup, right? So you can directly connect with them and start chatting and doing things. It's one step away from reaching people. Even if you want to search a job, you can directly ping a headshot and say, I'm interested in the position that you have posted. I would like to get a job. You will be able to get it. So in fact, I, it worked for me also. Mm, couple of times it worked for me also. So LinkedIn is very good for uh, your career base. So I think since you guys are in college times, I would suggest you guys to have a very strong LinkedIn profile maintained from now itself. Also try to get connection with people uh, who are prominent in your industry. If you want to go in agriculture industry, if, if you are able to find agricultural people, get connected with them. So you will get some ideas. You, you can also follow the agriculture news. On daily basis, you will get the news, real-time scenarios, what's going on, what are the improvement areas. If you're interested in IT, you can follow that also. You have all the options, options in your hand. So what happened is, this particular founder, he posted in LinkedIn that I want to purchase uh, furniture. That's a used furniture. Do you guys have it? Then he was surprised by saying within one day, he got 30 responses. So he wanted to get any one response, but he got a 30 response and now it's his time to choose the best response and best furniture. He has a lot of good offerings. So out of all those things, he made, he got the best offering and he made the deal and uh, he saved almost 50 percentage of his capital expenditure. Right? So that's the reason you should always seek for help. 
All you have to ask is just ask for help. Next is be really flexible. So this is a very crucial point. You guys have to be really really flexible. If your journey is going towards entrepreneurship, you should never think about nine to five jobs. That's very important. So the thing is, see one good thing is when you are an entrepreneur, whatever you are doing, it is for yourself. So you are ultimately you are going to gain for it. So that's why you will feel that interest also will automatically it will come within you. But that's not the case when you are doing a job. So some people work passionately, but some people will work only for money. And uh, after five o'clock, they don't want to work. So the mentality has to change if you are going towards an entrepreneurship career. Uh, you should be flexible enough because when you are working on a job. If you are not contributing to particular issue or particular thing that you want to resolve, it's not going to impact you. So it's going to impact somebody else. But that's not the case in entrepreneurship. If you are doing something, if you are not responding, your teammates will, your people who are working with you, they will feel bad. There is a chance that attrition can also happen. People can leave the company also. So you need not take that risk, and you have to be very proactive if you are entrepreneur. If you get something at even night ten o'clock, you should be able to. Uh, attend it, attend the issue, resolve the issue. You should take the ownership. That's very important if you're an entrepreneur. And uh, that's the reason I told you: if you want to go in that career, you have to be interested and passionate. Otherwise, it will be little tough. Last thing is keep your best friend with you. Who is the best friend, guys? No, you know. No I think you guys already answered this question in a different way. Yeah. That's correct. I had an answer. It's Google. So whatever you want to do in a business, how to start a good business, how to do marketing, how to improve your uh, marketing strategies, how to expand your business, which is a good location for starting a business, everything you'll get in Google. So always make sure that you make the best use of Google. Go to the next. All right. So these are good MSME schemes, right? So. The thing is, MSME focus on the small businesses. So when you start your own business, it is going to fall under a small business. So the small businesses are the actually the backbone of our Indian economy, right? Not only in India, even in other countries, small businesses are very important for the uh, GDP and very important for the uh, economy and other things. So our government has brought this MSME scheme so that. These small small companies get benefited out of it. There are a lot of benefits. If you if you are owning an MSME and if you are registering for MSME, you are going to get a lot of benefits that will help you. That you can save a lot of money and additional benefits. You, you not only saving money, you can get more money also. So I will explain in detail about it. Uh, first thing is about Udyog Aadhar. So Udyog Aadhar, what it does is uh, basically. If you want to get some loan in a bank, what do you do? You guys may have to show a land, right? So collateral. You should show a land, and you should get the money. And based on income, personal income, that personal loan is different. But in general, if you start a business, you don't need to do any collateral. You know, you don't need to show any collateral. So you will get the loans at a very cheaper price, very cheaper interest compared to other places. So compared to market standard, you will get a lot of good. Right, right. So you don't need to show a collateral also. That's a very big, very good benefit for anybody who wants to start a uh, entrepreneurship journey in a MSME. Right. So that's one thing. And uh, if you see, there are a lot of other benefits also. MSME, uh, they if you are registered under it, you will get the government tenders. So government tenders are something which they will not give to random people. If you are registered under MSME, only then you will get a government tender. If you want to get some road construction or whatever it is, so if you want to get that, you have to be registered. So it's very important. If you guys in future start a business within your, I mean, only among yourself or with your family, whatever, make sure that it's registered with MSME, right? So that's one thing, and you will also get the certificates easily, government certificate, government license, everything will be available easily for you guys, and you will get lot of subsidies also. You will get a lot of reduction in uh, electricity. If you have some customer, right? So uh, if you are making some sales, you have to get that money back. So usually you have to get that money from 15 to 45 days. If the 45 days exceeded, if you are registered under MSME, so whatever principal amount he has to give back to you, he has to give 
three times the interest along with the principal. So this gives you a guarantee, kind of insurance, kind of guarantee that you will get the money back. So these kind of things are available legally if you are registered on MSME. And registering on MSME is very easy. So it's all that you just need to uh, visit MSME website, uh, Udayam website. So you can just uh, enter your personal details like Aadhaar card, PAN card, and uh, how many people are working in your company, whether it's a proprietary company, whether it's a private company, a public company. Uh, you can give all those details and you can just get registered. It's a very simple process and it's totally free of cost. There is no cost also. Then next is the D, zero defect, zero effect. So what I think you guys can understand by the term itself, zero defect, zero effect. So this is about exports. So if your company is exporting some goods to foreign countries, right? So uh, government wants to make sure that your exports are having zero defects. The reason is uh, that will give a better image and that will boost the export things in India. At the same time, what happens, for every successful export, you will get some subsidy from the company, from, from the country, from Indian government. So that is all about zero defect and zero effect. Then quality management standards and uh, quality technology tools. So this is about educating the entrepreneurs. So the people who are starting the business. So there is a council called Quality Council of India. So what they do is, they conduct some uh, daily, uh, like one day awareness program, they conduct some uh, workshops in metro cities, some next level workshop in Delhi, all these things so that the entrepreneurs are aware of the latest trends in the te uh, trends in technology which they can utilize in their current company. And that is a grievance system also. So if you guys are facing any issue when doing a business, there is a grievance system where you can register your issue and so that it will be resolved on a timely basis. Then incubation, this is the most important point. So incubation is all about raising funds. So there are a lot of people who want to start a business but they don't have any money to start it. So this is a right option for you guys. So what happens here is, not all ideas will be funded but there is a selection committee for that. So you guys have to carry your ideas, you guys have to present your ideas and when you guys are presenting your ideas, they will see, okay, so this idea is better, this idea is not better. There will be a lot of filtering will happen. If your idea gets selected, you will get 75 to 80 percent of your total cost that is needed for you to start your business. So that will be given from the Indian government itself. And uh, there is a limit maximum up to 8 lakh. Because it's a MSME, right? MSME, they are giving a, a cap maximum up to 8 lakh. So up to 8 lakh, it's a very good amount for you to start a business. And uh, you will get that support. Then credit in capital subsidy scheme. So this is all about replacing your old technology and uh, old machineries with the new technology and new machinery. So you are already working in, uh, you are owning a company and you are running the business. So you, you want to replace your old machines with the new machines, old plants with the new plant, all, all those things. So for that what happens is, the new machines and things will be very costly, right? If you are registered on MSME, you will get very good discount on the new machines and you will get a subsidy on top of it. Then is a woman entrepreneurship. This is for the woman guys, oh, sorry, woman people who are over here. So there are a lot of support that you guys will get if you want to start your own business. You will get a good capital support, you will get a, a moral support, you know, you will get some guidance, mentorship and uh, there are incredibly good benefits that you guys will get. I think you guys have to explore more on these things. So whatever I am displaying you here and whatever the takeaway that you guys are going to get out of this presentation, it is going to be the starting stage for you guys. So you guys can actually get some starting area where you can start as a entrepreneur. But if you want to improve more, grow more, you have to research a lot, you have to involve yourself, you have to start learning more towards it. Let me go to the next slide. Okay, I think these fonts are very tough for you guys to read, I understand. So let me read you guys for the last line. Who can apply? So this is about the incubation. So incubation is something which I already told you. This is all about uh, raising funds. So IITs, NITs, engineering colleges approved by AICT, Central State Universities recognized by UGC. So all these people can apply for incubation. So 
you guys of uh, Sangeeta Engineering College, Agriculture Department, you guys can actually apply for MSME. If you have some good idea, you can raise for the incubation, right? So you are actually eligible. That is something which I wanted to tell you guys through this line. So you have to be aware of this because there are a lot of people who are not actually knowing this. You may have some idea, but you may not know this. So you have to research more about it and you can see how you can apply and you can start your business and other things. So this will be the flow of incubation. What happens here is, initially you have to uh, propose your ideas to papers. So they will filter a lot of ideas. There will be a huge number of ideas that people will be getting, right? So once that is filtered out, then your team will be called. Let's assume if three people are having some idea. So you three people will be called to the selection committee and there will be a discussion. They will ask you about the ideas and if that your ideas are impressed, if the selection committee is satisfied with your idea, in that particular scenario, what will happen is you guys will get the incubation. So you may get 5 lakhs, you may get 6 lakh. According to what you guys have presented, you will get that money. With that money, you can start the business. It is totally free of cost, you will get from the government. Only thing is, this works if your idea is new. This should not be a copied idea. So this is the only difference from the previous example and this current example. So when your idea is new, like if you want to start your business in one street, right? You may have a couple of juice shops. If you want to start the third juice shops in the same street, your idea will get rejected. So you should have some idea which is much different from the existing thing. So you should bring something new to that particular area. In that case, your uh, the chances of getting selected will be pretty high. Right? So this is the overall flow. HI is nothing but it's a hosted institution. So you will be part of hosted institution if you start a business. And the application then it goes to a selection committee. If it gets rejected, you can actually reapply within the next three months. It's not that you cannot reapply back. If your idea is getting rejected, they will not reject you just like that. They will be giving you some feedbacks. Feedbacks for the area of improvement and other things. Once you guys started getting the feedback, you can work on that for the three months and come back and again you guys can start giving uh, extra, uh, same presentation and get that particular thing out. You can raise funds. So once it's approved, then idea recommendation will happen, then selection committee will select you and uh, the process will end. Any questions or doubts till now, guys? I think I'll keep speaking. If you have any questions, you can feel free to raise. The session is boring, tell me guys. Okay. I hope you guys are energetic, right? Yes. Let's move to the next slide. Okay, this is about the MSME classification which I told you. <coughs> so the one which is on the top, right? So that is all about the MSME classification which was previously there. The one on the bottom, which is the current one. So previously, manufacturing and uh, services industries had separate separate uh, slabs. Now they are combined together, right? So basically, if you see, right, so manufacturing and product. So product and service, you can categorize any company broadly into two phases. Like one, either it should be part of uh, product classification or it has to be part of service classification. So if I give you guys some example, Zomato is a it's a food delivery company. It's a product. Right, so sorry, sorry, it's a service. Uh, so, so if you see uh, any product, you can take example of uh, credit card companies, American Express, or you can take uh, Slice or whatever. So any product that you get, that those things will be under uh, product companies. Service companies are all about doing something for the products, so doing betterment of the product. So services companies has to work for the products. Service companies is like Infosys, TCS, CDS, HCL. These are all service companies. Big product companies like you have uh, uh, Uber Foods, so that is also kind of service, right? So you guys need to classify between per, uh, service and product. So if you are, if I manufacture something and if I give it, sell it to you, and if you are getting the product, that is called product. Service is something which I am doing for you guys to transfer the products or just uh, doing something to the product. That is called service. So initial, previously, if you see this micro, small, medium, so this was a slab. So micro slab was, investment was less than 25 lakh. And uh, for the manufacturing enterprises and for service enterprises, it was less than 10 lakh. But today, it's increased to 1 crore and 5 crore turnover. 
So why the investment has to be increased? So there is a question which may come. So let's assume you start a business and you started growing the business. When you start the business, you have started with just 5 lakh rupees. Then the valuation keeps increasing. At one point of time, your investment and other things raises up to 30, 35 lakhs. If I am in the world club, I have my company will be considered as small instead of micro. So you will start losing the benefits of micro uh, tagline. So this is a request which came and uh, during the budget what they did is they changed this uh, uh, investment to a next level. So 25 lakh was increased to 1 lakh and today this sorry 1 crore and today all these companies who are in 35 lakhs if your company is in the 35 lakhs still it will be considered as micro. So you still keep getting the same benefits. So that's the main reason of this improvement. And this is what is MSME. So M is medium, small, micro. So this is how your companies will be classified. So all these are considered as uh, MSME companies. Okay. Next comes is the role of IT in agriculture sector. So how IT industry can improve in agriculture? Right. Uh, so the first thing is it can improve the productivity. Yes. So there are a lot of areas where farmers today are doing manual work, they have to do uh, manual labor is pretty huge. So when IT comes into picture with the help of IT, you can actually automatize them, you can use the machineries that is called agriculture mechanization. So you can actually use IT so that you can do things better, your productivity will be increased, you can do things at a much faster rate. When it comes to this, right, I want to tell you that the population also is going to increase a lot in India. Let's uh, let's take a benchmark of 2050. So, Indian population will increase at least 1.5 times more than what is currently present. So, when the population is increasing, what happens is there is a huge demand for uh, food and shelter. So, real estate business is going to boom for the next 20 years. At the same time, food sector also going to boom. So, you have to also think how you can implement things in a much better way than how it is right now. So for that IT in this IT will help you out. Uh, if you see India is development developing country right now. So there are a lot of developed countries where they are actually taking the help of IT and improving a lot of stuff uh, compared to what we are doing here. We are kind of lagging a lot of places. So if you want if you want to implement all those things there is a lot of opportunities for you uh, to improve the existing agriculture. Then is a community involvement. So right now we are all disconnected, right? People who are working, uh, farmers who are working. So they have a limited idea. Uh, so and they are continuously doing the same thing. But there is a chance using IT, DBMS, and other things. What you can do is you can get connected with other people. So person who has a uh, so the farmer who is within Tamil Nadu in a remote place can actually reach with someone in Hungary also. So what benefit you will get out of it is, you will get a good connection with, between the people across uh, the world with, who are having the same expertise as you and what they are doing, how you can implement those things to yourself. So it's a very good to have that kind of contact with other people. So that's what is about community involvement. Then, is, then comes a good post harvest practices and value addition of farm procedure, right? So after harvesting, so you have to store some store your thing somewhere. So that storage is going to take. Uh, that's a li little bit complex process in in India and developing countries. But there is a huge scope to improve it, and uh, there are a lot of Western countries who are doing very much brilliant. Work. And uh, they are automating all the storage things, and they are doing making use of machines and a lot of things. And we have a chance to improve that area also. Improve decision making by the farmer. So with the help of IT, what we can do is, if the farmer has to uh, sow some seeds on the on the soil, if the farmer has to you know uh, put some nutrients into the soil, so what type of soil he can choose and what time he can choose, whether it will rain or not, whether weather for customers is the same thing. So whether how the rain will be, so a lot of calculations can be done using big data and things. And uh, with all this analysis, it gives a better picture for you so that you can sow in the right place, you can put the right fertilizers, right nutrients, and uh, it gives a lot of decision making ability to the farmer. Then comes the improved efficiency and service delivery. Uh, so, improved efficiency. So, right now, 
the farmer has to be present all the time. Let's say uh, if you make use of some drones. So how we can use drones in agriculture? Any examples, guys? Sorry. Yeah, fertilizer, water spraying. Water spraying irrigation is a good good one also. So uh, there is no need for the farmer to be present all the time. He can relax and he, if he has something else, he can focus on that and he can just let the drone fly over the farm and that can actually spray water, sprinkle water over throughout and that will make the work done. So that is a scope of improving the efficiency and service delivery. In that way, delivery will happen on time without any uh, delay. Weather forecasting and climate smart farming already covered and last one is remote sensing and GPS location. So if the farmer is somewhere else, still he can uh, look about like what actually, how, how the particular farm is and he will get all those things through sensors. So when it comes to IT, role of IT in uh, uh, agriculture, right? So the ma major thing is going to be about Internet of Things. Internet of, Internet of Things is all about sensors. So you can use a lot of sensors. You can even use livestock sensors also. So on some uh, uh, animals, you can have some body sensors. You can have some sensors on the soil. You can have some sensors somewhere else. So wherever you want to have, you can actually have them and you can get the data continuously. So it will be uh, time series data. So for every, you, you, can, you can actually classify the time. It can be every one minute or every five minute or every one hour. So continuously the data will come and you can use those data and you can transform the data in a more meaningful manner and uh, you can visualize those data. So that will help in a lot of decision making. Let me go to the next slide. This is an example of uh, big data analytics framework for connected agriculture. So you guys can see uh, the soil sensor on the left. You have drones, spraying water, weather data, crop sensor, databases, all those things. So that will be the area starting point of uh, data. So any data which is going, which we are going to gather from agriculture for IT, it is going to be started with the sensors. So from those sensors, we will get the data into some uh, data lake. We call this as a data lake in ID term, SDFS. Uh, so we put all those data, so it will go to raw layer. So from whatever data we get uh, from the uh, sensors to the raw layer, it will not be a proper transform data. We have to do ETL and all those things. So we have to extract the data, transform it. Uh, so there are specific data type in which we have to store the data. So we will perform these transformations and we will store them after transformation to different layer, not from uh, raw layer to uh, curated layer. Once that is stored, and we can actually create some dashboards, and those dashboards will help you guys for a better visualization and reporting. Right? Yeah. So overall, this is how we can build a big data framework. And uh, based on the final visualization things, that's where uh, it gives you some idea about decision making and other things. So you can have a look about the top 10 funded agri startups from, it was, it was a data which was until June 2022. So you can have a look. So I brought this slide so that you guys can have some idea about the startup companies which are prominent. Any question there? Yeah, which are prominent in the agriculture sectors. So you can see Ninja Card, Baycool, D-Hat, Absolute, Absolute, sorry, Agros, Agros, Thar, Maria, Frazo, Format, OTP and uh, So, see, uh, one, one common thing uh, that you can focus, right? So, there are already a lot of startups, but you can also focus. One common idea is, so, you can create an app using uh, ID infrastructures. You can create an app, that app, uh, like the farmers can actually get some, see if they need some fertilizers that to be purchased, if they need some pesticides to be purchased, uh, if they need some machines to be purchased, everything, everything should be available in that app. If all those things are available in the app, what they can do is, a farmer can just go to the app and he can uh, pick whatever he needs, he can make an order, so he will get all those things. So this app uh, company is going to be intermediate between supplier and the uh, people who actually need it. So the supply company, from there you will get the, those products and to this uh, farmer. So that is one example which is already been done in one of the startups and there are a lot of other examples also. So you can see the series like uh, latest round. So initially uh, I explained you about uh, incubation, right? So incubation is all about uh, seed round, they will say. That's the first round. 
So once that is done, mm -hmm. you, you have to raise your funds with each and every series. Yeah. It goes for series A, then series B, series C, series D funding, all those. So if you see, if you try to correlate uh, series A with the revenue, it will be lesser compared to series D with the revenue. That is because series A is the first round. You are, you are getting almost close to 20 crore. Series D uh, is not disclosed. You can see the ABO example. You will get close to 300 crores. So every series, when your company valuation keeps increasing, you will get an opportunity to participate in the rounds and uh, you will get a lot of people, lot of companies, investors who are ready to invest in your company. In that way, you can improve your funds, your valuation, your business, all those. So this is the current uh, future trend that you can see in IT with agriculture management before. So internet of things, I think the things are not clear, so I am waiting for you guys. Internet of things, robotics, artificial intelligence, drones, drones precision agriculture, agribiotechs, agri biotech, big data analytics, centralized environmental, control environment agriculture, regeneration agriculture. So these are some agri trends that you guys can focus for 2024. And if you guys get any opportunity to learn about these things, you can spend your free time to learn about this. You can even you guys may have some final year projects or some mini projects. You can get this opportunity uh, to focus on these areas also. Or if you have your own idea, that's also fine. It's good to have this idea about what's going on in the current year. Alright, so we are almost close to the last slide. So there are 102 unicorn startups in India. Anybody knows what is unicorn startup? What is the difference between a startup and a unicorn startup? Anybody guess? Service based company. Uh, no, you, these are all unicorn startups. You see product companies also. You can see uh, Inmobile, you can see Compi. Ah, maximum, but uh, there are some uh, product, uh, purple is a product, that, that's an e-commerce company, right? So, any other guess? Purple. Yeah, e-commerce is a medium to sell a product, but my question is a little different. It's like, what is a unicorn startup? Yeah, there was uh, somebody who was trying to answer. Private startup? Valuation. I hope you guys are not Googling. Okay. Okay. Uh, what about division can you give me? <laughs> ah, great. That's the right answer. So basically, see, when you start a business, you are not going to have $1 million money. So you are going to have a very lesser amount, right? So you may start with uh, some 5 lakh rupees, 6 lakh rupees, 9 lakh rupees, it will change. So when you keep increasing, when your business keeps growing at one point, what happens? You are going to reach $1 billion. So when your company is reaching $1 billion, which means it's it's a unicorn in India. It's a very big thing. For a startup to reach $1 billion is not so easy. It's a very tough, difficult journey. But 102 unicorn startups are made in India. Uh, so these are all Indian companies. You can see Big Basket, Afna, Daily Time. And you see Coin, it's a cryptocurrency company. Coin is a cryptocurrency company. You have Oyo, you have Zomato, Upgrade. Freshwalls was something which uh, it is recently listed in uh, USA. And uh, yeah, credit, credit is also credit card, payment company, policy bazaar. So almost every company, most of you would already know. It's very famous, right? So if you start a business, in order to reach this stage, it is, what is required is you need to make your valuation to $1 billion. So there is a long journey that you have to go with. So if you guys notice something, do you guys see any agricultural company in this? Okay. Big Basket is an e-commerce company I'll put in that way. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. But uh, Agri started. There are some companies specific to Agri, right? Rebel. Fruits is that? Food, food. okay. Food says uh, delivery is fine. Zomato also put delivery, right? Okay, let me tell you something. So, the thing is, there is no agriculture startup here. Uh, so, the reason why I am asking this, so, the uh, reason why I want to highlight this, 
There is a company called DHAT, which we saw a couple of slides before. That has a high chance of becoming a, a unicorn. We can expect that within the next five years, DHAT can actually become a unicorn startup. So right now, it is at a very uh, higher, closer valuation to 1 million. It is at 800 million dollar evaluation right now. If that valuation reaches 1 million, it will become a unicorn. So they, they almost close to e, serious E funding also. So there is a lot of scope for the agri industry to become a unicorn and uh, there is a lot of scope for agri industry for growing their businesses also. Thank you. Okay. So this is all about the session. If you guys want to give any feedback, feel free to uh, make note of my LinkedIn profile. You guys can connect with me if you have some questions. I'll be able to answer you guys. And uh, you can give my, uh, if there is there's something called endorsements in LinkedIn. If you guys can endorse me, that would be really great. So before I close, I just want to uh, ask you guys if you guys have something specific to be addressed or answered. Please let me know. I'm here for another couple of minutes. Is everything clear? Is the session interesting? Yes, yes sir. Honestly? Yes, yes sir. Okay, great. Anybody? Any questions? Which one? Rare animals. Yes, yes. Yeah, the poultry, right? It will come in the uh, So you can think of that idea also. Poultry is a very good idea. So nowadays you have a huge scope for that. Good business. Competition is serious. You have to stand out of it. You should think of something different. You have to choose the right location. You can see which location if you start it, it will be good. The main thing is you have to you should be able to sell those things up. So if you see a couple of days back also, uh, so the goats are all got saved for 25,000 also. 25,000, one goat for 25,000. So there is a chance. Based on what flesh. Great, yeah, everything. So, I got one question. Any other question, guys? But I think it's been a long time, but thank you so much, guys, because each and everyone listened very well. I was looking everyone almost mostly, 90% of the faces are very bright throughout the session. So, I'm so happy to give you the session. So, I actually want to give thank, thank Mr. Nagaraj, sir. Special thanks to him. So happy and uh, thanks to Sarita Engineering College Dean also. Thanks everyone. For all the professors who are here, uh, my humble thanks to you all for inviting me. Thank you guys.